Hello, hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather Corinne, and I flip furniture and thrifted items for fun and for profit. Today, we're going to be flipping two cute wooden signs that I thrifted into some modern and trendy art, so stay tuned. Today I wanted to do a flip that would be really easy to recreate for just about anyone. So basically you'll need to look for wooden signs from thrift stores, Facebook marketplace, garage sales, or maybe even a sign you already have hanging in your home. So what I look for when I'm trying to find a piece like this is solid wood in pretty good condition that I can sand down and paint over with chalk paint and acrylic paint. You can buy pre-made signs from places like Target and Michaels, but typically, in my personal opinion, these are drastically overpriced. For instance, the ones that I got today were $23.99 a piece, so we're looking at like $45-ish for these, and then you'd have to buy the supplies to recreate them and paint them and sand them and all of that. So I paid $5 on Facebook Marketplace for this pair and I'm going to flip them into some modern trendy art that probably would have cost at least $30 in a retail store. So here we go. Here is a quick photo of what they looked like before. They were just a little bit outdated salt and pepper shakers. And here is a picture of the Pinspiration that I found. I'll link this down below for you. I really liked how the center of the sun and the moon were the same color, so I kind of sketched these out on a piece of paper to make sure I liked the colors that I wanted to use before I sanded these pieces with 220 grit sandpaper, then cleaned them off with Mrs. Meyer's Clean Day and taped around the edges because I liked how they were already black. Then I went in with Chalky Finish Classic White. This is Krylon that I had mixed at Lowe's just because I had it on hand already, but any white paint would do. This is chalk paint, but I think white acrylic paint would work as well. So I just go and put two coats of this on and make sure they are super dry before I do any of the drawing. Using a measuring tape, I found the exact center of each piece once the paint was dry so that I would know where to start the center of the sun and the center of the moon so they would be even with each other. I ended up using a wooden bowl that I had in the basement to trace circles in the center for the sun and the moon. So you could do this with any circle shaped item that you have in your home that fits the piece that you have. The key is not to press down hard with your pencil, you just want to ever so slightly make a visible circle that you could fill in with paint. So we're putting one full circle in the center of each piece. Then we're going to do half circles on the top and the bottom of the moon piece. Next, I'm going to draw a few guidelines on the sun piece from the corners to the center of the sun. This may have worked better if I had drawn more lines, but I ended up freehanding most of them. So just feel it out, whatever works best for you. If you're good at freehanding, go right ahead. Now we're going in with the lightest color in the center and we're filling in the sun and the moon with the same matching color, which is just a full circle. Thank you. 
You can see me go back in and erase the guidelines down to where I can just barely see them. That makes it easier to paint over it so you can't see the pencil through. And I just started with this light color and I did four lines with it, not quite touching the sun in the center, but going all the way to the edges, getting ever so slightly wider on the ends. Here again you can see me going in with an eraser to sort of lighten up these lines in the half circles just so that I can barely see them. I didn't want to be able to see the pencil through the paint. And then I went in with my second color and made a half circle of green. And then I take this same green color and make four lines on the sun. A lazy tip is to wipe your paintbrush off with a baby wipe in between colors so that you don't have to literally wash it out each time. Now I'm going in with our third color, which is this really pretty caramel is what I like to call it. If I know it's called something else. I'll link all these colors down below for you or list them out. And I just filled in that half circle as well and then did four more lines on the sun. The last step on the moon side is going to be to add two crescents in your fourth color and I chose this really pretty blue jean color. And I'm just using the half circle that I drew and then filling it in just a little bit thicker in the center and getting more narrow on each end. After that, I went in with this blue and put four more lines on the sun. After this, I just went in and finished filling in the sun rays with whatever color I felt like needed to go next and just switched in between colors until it was completely filled in to my liking. Now I'm going around and pulling off all of that tape that we had around the edges and then I'm also going to go in with that 220 grit sandpaper and give the edges just a little bit of distressing to add some character. I am so happy with how this look turned out and I hope you enjoyed it too. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you see my next project. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.